So I opted out. I opted out of the x-ray scan. My biggest reason is I have a tumor. If you watch in the video, you'll see where the tumor is in my neck. And all this extra radiation isn't going to help any of that. And in doing so, had a, some quality time with a guy giving me a full body pat down. So we've got a trip and my first real packaged food in like 36 days. I always like to send my wife a picture before I go somewhere, just so she can remember me. And here we are, just taking off, heading on out to land in Bismarck, North Dakota. And then I'm gonna drive with my brother out to Quigley, Montana. Unbeknownst to me, I'm traveling and I get a letter in the mail and it's all about every the city being upset that I didn't cut my lawn before I go. So now I get a possible bill for $160 an hour for somebody to come out and mow my lawn. Totally my fault, really need a way out of that. Here we're landing in Bismarck, North Dakota and then picking up luggage. My mama is meeting me. And here I'd like you to meet my grandma. She fell and broke her hip, so you can say a prayer for her. She's doing much, much better. And uh, there's a little surprise at the end, so uh, stick around, watch. It was a great blessing at the end. So we really needed to pick up food for me because of my diet with all the tumor stuff going on. And then we stopped at McDonald's. Yeah, go figure. This is just some great pictures on the way home back to the farm and then of course the farm and a storm rolling in and how beautiful is this just to see the lightning and the show love it now my mama she helped prepare all of this food for my special diet and so we did baked potatoes and uh, this is cilantro it was washed up and then in between it all there were fireflies going on outside which was really really beautiful like a whole field full of fireflies and that excites me, so I had to give it a thumbs up, and then I went to bed and found these huge bruises on my heels, all because I walked like right, three and a half miles in the Minneapolis-St. Paul airport. Here we're driving out to the Quigley, really? and this is in the Badlands, just entering the end of North Dakota and then getting into Montana. We're actually headed to Forsyth, Montana, just like 90 miles outside of Billings. And here, pulling up the dirt roads. It's, it's really out in the middle of nowhere pulling up the dirt roads and uh, my brother's got a little surprise in his car for us here in a moment. He's got a really fancy Subaru and so he's showing me about the traction control and, and how it responds and you basically can't slide out. So here's the Quigley and probably a, almost 700 shooters coming out for uh, the Quigley Down Under. So my dad drove out early, he pulled out this this camper, which is what we stayed in, and then uh, here he is walking up. So I wanted to give a tour of the camping unit. This my dad worked so hard on. So this brings us around, got the refrigerator. The lighting's probably not so good, but it, there's food in there and it's cold and it's totally doing what we want it to do. Got the kitchen, just made some oatmeal and the bed. And that concludes a tour of the entire facility. So I've never really been to a shoot of this size before. Nice and there's a wagon. lot of walking going on. You're always moving things around in the in the pull cart and uh, carrying the rifles and, and just just enjoying the just exercise. So oh, we're going up to the line to shoot. Here we meet my brother. We call him Big Mike because he's taller than me. He's pretty much gifted at everything. That natural guy that, you know, whatever he does, he picks up immediately and can outperform you. This is, this is the cart, and, and it's got these huge flat wheels. It's actually intended for sand. And I didn't know, but tomorrow it's going to rain and pour just miserably, and that cart's going to be difficult to pull. In the full context of this shoot, we're shooting offhand here, about 350 yards at a target that you'll see in a moment. And so my dad's doing the spotting because you can't actually see that far with the naked eye. So you have a spotter and you have a shooter and the combination makes a benefit. Now you, here you can see the scope hit me in the middle of the forehead. 
always proud of those moments. And then the sunrise and sunsets were just beautiful because you're so far away from the city. Yeah. One of them is, is uh, it burns pretty much the same in all different temperatures. See, my, my dad's a gunsmith, and so talking black powder guns is totally his element. Good, glorious morning. It's the next day. It rained all night. Got to get the generator started and start working on breakfast. So, down to orange juice in the morning. Slow motion and the flame starting up. I just enjoy taking shots like this. It gives you a little creativity moment. Here I'm just checking in on my dad. He slept in the van, which is, it's, it's nice. There's a comfy bed in there. And then just showing you the amount of water that dropped the next, well, all night, the next day. We stayed inside the entire day, waiting so out. Everything got rained out. It's going to be delayed until tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. I was so thankful my mom got me some waterproof shoes before we went because I would have been destroyed the whole time. The Revolutionary War. And here we're back into the camper. Another capture of just how much rain was coming down, leaking in. Here we're kind of all cooped up, tired of sitting around. And of course you get creative. You like you gotta figure out ways to dry out everything. Tell you where you're signed up. Now remember it had been raining, so I mean there's snakes, rattlesnakes out on the prairie here. And I just walked way up on the hill to get a good picture of the overall camping area. You know, with 700 people there, there's a lot of motorhomes and tents, and it was just really a fun time. Not only that, there's shops that set up. And so here, a lady had made all of this with a sewing machine that was literally in her little tent. And it was just amazing to see the craftsmanship, like the, the appreciation of the, the machine itself. And just the fact that it's, it's a, a step pedal, like it's one that has no power. Here I'm back up on the hill, just taking some pictures of the rocks. I thought it was super, super cool area. And uh, just wanted to enjoy what God's created and made. I think this is a prairie crocus, not 100% sure. You can always comment and let me know if you know what kind of flower that is. I just think it's important to appreciate the things that God's created. and Then you've got the creativity of people, right? Who leaves a mannequin sitting by their motorhome? It's like a scarecrow. This is a $5,000 rifle, custom built just for just, Kenny. And uh, he's just taking a look at it. I mean, I don't think he's, he's intent on buying it. It's just kind of fun to handle so things like that. Shoes got so wet. Sorry. Just getting enough food was a big deal, so here I boiled up some apples and made applesauce with maple syrup. It was wonderful. Oh, I love that sound. Every morning, well, not morning, every time the furnace would turn on, the fan was, it needed oil, and it would howl like this all night long. Turn on every half an hour. A little more applesauce, just reheating and getting ready for the breakfast. I just think there's something about enjoying a good slow motion. Off to the start. This is where the shooters line up. We all go out on a line. Shooting line is super long. Because I mean, obviously it's gotta house all hundreds and hundreds of shooters. And just wanted to show some pictures of all the different carts People build customs, they buy some, they get super creative. There's even wagon shaped ones. And then we've got the horn. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. 
this is a practice like an example target and you mark up this to communicate with the shooter i'm just taking notes from my brother you gotta get a little stretch in before you're able to shoot so accurately at 350 to 800 yards i'm trying to show the the targets you can see them out there there's a black circle with a white dot in the center and and this is the best i could do with this particular camera Here we're just on the line, getting getting our scores in, getting all our hits in. I have to admit, my brother really made the difference. So this is the best you can see through the scope. Like I tried to identify what the target looked like. So difficult on the eyes, difficult without a spotter. But because my dad's an excellent gunsmith and my brother's an excellent shot, I was basically gifted the ability to just aim and shoot. Like everything was dialed in, I just pulled the trigger and was able to connect and uh, shot pretty well on the day because of that, because they helped me. I'm going to let you see those targets that are so far away. They actually go out on four wheelers, paint the target black, paint the center white so that you can see it, visibly see it. If not for the color, I don't know that you'd even be able to find them. Just a much more enjoyable day. The weather's right, and here you'll even notice, in just a moment, I'm gonna zoom in. I thought it was so cute the way that the baby had had earring protection, and it was just, everybody's just having fun. Just a good time with the family. Hit. You can hear the scorekeeper no. calling it out. When you hit a target, they say hit so that it's marked down and marked properly and we're just switching out spots you know one guy would spot one guy would shoot this is a little flag it's a trick shooters used to tell the wind direction and how, how fast the wind's going here we've got a young lady on the line super good shot just so impressed with all of the family elements involved you know moms and dads and husbands and wives and grandkids and just super super fun place to be we're all really enjoying that the rain stopped and can move the carts around and here's a little bit of my dad's creativity to create a salt shaker out of a old medicine bottle and I'm just showing you this my rain gear just got trashed it was brand new the day before and uh, the mud is it's hard on stuff just so neat seeing everybody come together this is kind of the end of the day award ceremonies and it was going to take a very long time uh, there were actually some mistakes made and so they needed to call it off like I mean they they gave out awards and it was it was a nice wait but at the end of the day we needed to go without actually knowing our whole score these are the scores for like our group and uh, I'm very humble in this because I couldn't have done it without the help. We're just on the drive back to North Dakota and I appreciate seeing the little baby ducklings. That, that would just be sweet to capture that. I mean the airport in North Dakota they've got a lot of dinosaur bones that show up and so they're actually housed in, in North Dakota in the airport and you can see all these things as you're passing through which makes the traveling a little bit more fun. I think it's weird that this is at an airport. I did leave all my ammunition in the car, so no amnesty problem here. I find the, the humor in this. I, I'm in North Dakota. It's as far away from an ocean as possible. And then on the flight back, I'm just going to sit back, read my Bible, take in a little bit more of the Gerson cancer therapy, and learn as much as I can, appreciating all that was given in this trip. MSP, Minneapolis-St. Paul Airport, and what a great way to wrap up a trip. I got to stop 
and see my grandma. My mom and I stopped to see my grandma on the way out. And you know, she's she had her hip replaced. She's not doing real well. She's she's just got a lot of health problems, health concerns. And one of the major concerns in life, I think, when you get hurt, is like what what's going to happen if I die here? You know, I think that's the real question. That that that's what really matters. It's probably what this whole trip was about. And so I asked her. Does your relationship with God make you sure that you'll go to heaven when you die? And, and you know, we all want to know. We're all looking. Uh, maybe some people aren't looking, but she, in her case, she was definitely looking. And I said, well, Grandma, uh, I, know, I know you know who Jesus is. Have you ever asked him to be your Savior and your Lord? And, and the big hang-up is, what would you say God's requirements are for you to get into heaven? And there's and there's only there's only one. It's to ask Jesus to be your Savior and Lord. So I'm assuming that you, as you're watching this, know who Jesus is, and this is the key. Like if you're at the end of your life, you're in your a place where you you just want to know. Like I was when I got in a really bad accident, and there are times when you think I just I just need to know. Like if some if I get hit by a bus or my in this case my plane crashes, where am I going to go when I die? I said Jesus. Jesus is the way. The big key in that is that you realize that you're a sinner. You see, Jesus lived a perfect life that I can't live. Like, I have messed up so many things in my life. And if you really want to start counting, you can think about, have you ever told a lie? Well, that's one. The Ten Commandments uh, measure us up really quickly, right? Have you ever told a lie? Have you ever stole something? Have you ever looked at a woman? with lust in your eyes or if you're a man you know uh, uh, if you're a woman have you ever looked at a man if you've ever had any of those things that one sin that one thing that you've broken in God's law not my law not man's law God's law that one thing separates you from God for all eternity and I told my grandma this, I just remember taking a piece of candy after my mom said no don't eat that it'll ruin your supper and it was at my grandma's house and I, I just remember feeling guilty like this was wrong but I didn't know what to do with it well that's because that sin and that sin separates me from God and, and rightly so that one sin if that was the only one would separate me from God for all eternity I would deserve to go to hell because I chose sin over him now the good news is that Jesus lived a life that we cannot live he died a death that we cannot die and he rose again from the dead that you and I can both partake in. And the key in this is simply recognizing that you're a sinner and that you need to be saved. And in saying, I just want God's forgiveness, Jesus, please come into my life, forgive me for the sin that I've had, and renew me with the love and forgiveness that you offer freely. And he will. And that's exactly what my grandma asked for. She's like, I want that. Would you pray with me? She actually said, would you pray with me? Would you do that? So we prayed. And to the best of my understanding and knowledge, my grandmother will be in heaven with Jesus forever. And so I know I'll get to see her again, no matter what happens. If this plane goes down, no matter what happens, I'll get to see her again. And that is an eternal hope. And I hope that encourages you and you have a great relationship with God yourself. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And the same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him, not anything made that was made. And this is the key. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. An ninja nerd, and I just had to appreciate the fact that a contrail was forming right out my window. Look at that, right off the wing. baggage claim areas here, like 14 baggage claim areas, but in the Bismarck Airport, there's literally only four outflights, but the baggage claims are 14 here, at least in the main terminals. And I think, I think my luggage is off already.
I win. And there's nothing like seeing hey, my beautiful here. bride when I've been gone for a few days. I gotta admit, being out in the country for a while makes it a little bit difficult to come back and deal with the city, but welcome home. <laughs>